This is Code.org. Let's talk about timers. It's critical to understand timers. They're used throughout applications and throughout games, and they provide us a lot of versatility in, in what we create. So I'm going to hit run. Right now, my code, I'm going to go ahead and add a watcher just so you can see. I have this variable found. Add that in here. And when I start the program and it's equal to zero, I click on the bag and it's equal to one. And now I click on the book and it will be equal to two. So pretty basic stuff there. I already set it up. I want to show off though what timers can do. I'm going to head to control. And then the first thing I'm going to grab is let's do a set time out. Okay. And so what this is, is this is in milliseconds. So this says set time out one second. And we can do a council log to see what it will do. Right, variables. Oh, there it is. Variable council log. I'll, I'll even, I mean, hello world. Sure. Okay. And so right now, if I go ahead and hit run after one second, boom, hello world. And maybe I want two seconds. Hello world. And so this can be good if you want some animation to run across your screen. You want words to disappear after they start the application, things like that. It can also be good is if I do something like this, say after, whoops, say after a certain amount of seconds, oh, I missed a bunch of stuff up. Say after a certain amount of seconds, I want to do a in screen. So I'm going to go into design real quick and just do new screen, game over screen. Okay. And I'll do something real creative just to have something up here and probably a big sat face. Perfect. So here's my beautiful game over screen. So after a certain amount of seconds, say they mess up and they don't click on my two items here. I want to blank the screen out with my game over screen. So what I would do is I'd use set out set timeout, right? In a certain amount of time, I want that to occur. So let me go to UI controls here and I would do set image. Nope. We want to set the screen, like I said. So many options. Oh, there it is. So set screen and I want not screen one, but I made my game over screen. So I want us to, uh, to be the game over screen after, I don't know, 10 seconds. So I'll put 10,000 in here. Let me do run and we count this off. Put off game over screen. But let's say I don't want it to always be the game over screen. I only want it to be the game over screen if they don't click on my two items here. So to do that, then I can go ahead and say, just like I have here, set timeout. Notice there's a function because inside of this set timeout, it's running a function and that function executes after uh, 10 seconds or a 10,000 milliseconds. So really, if I had a function name, I could put a function name here, comma and the amount of seconds and set timeout would work the same. Now, I want the set timeout. I want a clear timeout. Now, what does this do? I can hover over it and click here for examples. And it's always really handy to do this. I'll do it occasionally when I forget what's going on or what I need. So let's take a look at this example. Variable t, what is t equal to? Well, t is equal to our timeout. So we make this new variable and the variable is our timeout. It is the thing we're calling timeout on. Well, it's actually the timeout. Okay, so our timeout, what's the timeout right now? Well, I say after 10 seconds, blank the screen. So I'm making a variable that is that timeout thing right here. Once I do that, I can put it into an if statement and use it how I would like. Or, right, so this they check directly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if, now notice I don't have a variable for my set timeout like they did. And again, let's double check this right here var and look t equals and we can do that in text mode because we have a bit more uh versatility in there so i'm going to do var and then i'm going to say i i don't know end time because this is what ends the game all right so now i have a variable in time now what do i want to do what timeout do i want to clear well i want to clear in time i don't want to just clear it right away i'm going to want this somewhere else I'm going to want to clear in time. And let's say we only will clear in time if they click on the book second. Uh, no, let's do this. Let's do the, nah, let's do the book second. Why not? So what I'll do then is I'm going to do a if here. Okay. And if they click on the book 
and they've already clicked on the bag. So how can I tell? Well, I'm going to use this variable if found is greater than one, because if it's greater than one, they've already clicked on the bag. And what do I do then? Well, I cancel, I clear my end time. So let's see, I'm going to see if I can do this within three seconds. 3,000. Put three seconds, I'm going to hit run, bag, book. And hopefully, one, two, three, it doesn't happen. Now let's try it without clicking, run. Three seconds, sad face. Now let's try it with clicking the book first, book, then bag. Three seconds, sad face, right? Because only if I click the book second and founds greater than one do I clear my variable, which is time out. Okay, so there's a lot of versatility there. Now I'm going to get rid of this one, and because there's more stuff we can do. We can get time. I want to show you the timed loop. And again, you should always go ahead and use these examples. I use them myself. They're handy. So 10 timed moves, var count equals zero, timed loop 500, function, all of this stuff. If time, if count is equal to 10, stop timed loop. And so what this will do is, well, it says make 10 random moves in half second intervals. Every half a second, 10 random moves will be made. Okay, and we can do something similar or count the number of seconds elapsed since the program started running. I like this one. I'm honestly going to copy control C is what I just did. And I'm going to show it to you. Paste. Let's hit run on it. Is it council logged? Yep. I have one seconds, two seconds, three seconds. And this shows you right here, it's counting by seconds because this is one. So if I were to change this to 100, that would be milliseconds. So now I would do 100 milliseconds is 0 0.1 seconds. Zoop. Super fast, right? This controls how rapidly you are doing something. So if, for instance, you wanted your book to move at a certain pace across the screen, you could use this, right? Maybe I wanted, and I'm going to stick with the counter pattern, which we don't necessarily need right now, but I'm just making my point here. So I'm going to say uh, book, we'll use set property. Yeah, let's use set position. Perfect. And my ID is book. Okay. And then I'm going to do books X value. We have a few different ways we can do this. Yep. Okay. Books, I can go back to box for ease. Books X value is going to be equal to whatever the X value used to be equal to. So I need to get the X value again. book x uh i'm gonna say plus one okay and i don't need this size stuff just the position and let's see what this does and every millisecond right every one tenth of a second i or every hundred milliseconds every one tenth of a second the book now is being pushed over by one by one pixel right and that's what this timed loop is able to do. We can move stuff around. We can have stuff grow in size. It's really versatile. And same idea here. Maybe once they click on the bag, I want my book to stop running, right? Book, bag. Ah. So I'm just going to say stop time looped here. Notice you don't have to say which one. It's going to stop them. Boop. Book is not moving. We halted it. Okay. And this last one, get time, it's, well, it is what it says. It literally gets the time. Calculate the ellipse, uh, the lapse time for five clicks. Five ticks, stop, to start, get time. And let's go ahead and I'm going to do copy again. I'll show off some of what they've done. I'm going to do show blocks. Let me get rid of all this. I'm going to hit paste, show blocks, and let me hit run on this. Zero. Oh, start time, stop time. Obviously, I should have. Okay, I'm going to do the start time at the top. I'm going to do the start stop time when I click on a book. All right, I don't need the found right now. So run. And so it got the start time the second I clicked run. Now let me click. And that's the amount of milliseconds that have elapsed. If that's not making sense, let me copy here. I'm going to click right ah, here. No, I'm not. Right there. And let's hit run. Oh, stop hasn't been created yet. Uh, yep, that would make sense. I just went start. So let's show off what the start time is when we start. 
here's my start time, book. And that's the leftovers, because this is calculated in milliseconds since 1970. Don't let that freak you out, but this is how you can do elapsed time for items as well if you need to time them. We have a lot of options, a lot of variety in what we can do with the with the methods, with the functions, where we can manipulate and adjust objects based on time. Keep in mind, the C examples is super useful. I hope you make something awesome. If you do, tell me about it in the comments.